The mission of the Agrarian Adventure is to enrich students' connections to the foods that they eat and not just how it relates to their personal health, but to the health of their communities and the environment. And we do that through experiential education in food and agriculture and healthy learning at lunch. The Agrarian Adventure runs a weekly after-school enrichment cooking and gardening program for its students. Teachers, parents, and chefs of the community contribute their time and energy to make this possible. I'm the go-to guy when we ever cook anything out of the garden. I think one of the original reasons why I got into it is I just kind of needed to change the way students think about food and where it comes from. Um, not necessarily do I want them to make the right choices or anything like that, but I want them to be able to make at least an educated choice in what they're doing. So I found out about the Agrarian Adventure, I guess, before it was the Agrarian Adventure, when it was just an, uh, a project idea of um, a group of teachers at the school and um, uh, the, at the time the leader of uh, Slow Food here on Valley, the local chapter of Slow Food, which I was a leadership team member of. And, um, we had this idea that um, you could create an amazing um, schoolyard, garden, and kitchen classroom at a school in Ann Arbor and uh, were inspired a lot by what was going on in, in uh, California and Oakland uh, with the uh, schoolyard. Schoolyard is um, a really, really intensive um, involvement at, at one school level, at a middle school level. And so there's a lot of things about that model that are a really good fit and that are some of what we've worked on here at this school. You know, Alice came here and did a fundraiser for us about four years ago. Uh, she actually spoke here at Tappan. Um, as soon as she got to the food for it, she threw it out of um, she, she she helped out quite a bit with that by raising quite a bit of awareness for our own, our own program. At that school, they have a lot of support staff and they actually run it through in their school days. So they go um, to, to, I don't know what they call the class actually, but like to the edible schoolyard as part of their third or fourth hour or whatever um, period their class is going in, where they're doing cooking and they're doing gardening and they're out um, doing many of the same things that we're doing. Um, our approach has been to integrate more within the core curriculum. So during, at, at this school, during social studies, they might be going out to do something in the garden, or during language arts, they might be coming into the kitchen classroom, um, or during science, they might be um, out taking soil samples and out testing the different parts of the garden and greenhouse. You know, it's pretty inspiring, you know, she was one of the first ones to start something like this, to integrate food back into the curriculum uh, and actually growing the food back into the curriculum. There was a community member who was a really active food, in the food realm um, who heard about a lot of school garden um, initiatives going on in California. And so he lives actually just down the street from Chapman Middle School. And this is his local school. So he just approached the principal and said, hey, there's amazing things going on in California. Um, could we do something like that in Michigan? What about at your school? And the principal, Gary Court, is, um, is a real visionary and a leader and was really able to kind of take, take that step. And not every school was able to do that. Not every school has a leader like that. But he said, yeah. Let's try. Let's try something like that. Having significantly different weather conditions than the California school, the Agrarian Adventure has strategically developed the program to be active throughout the year. We have a, a school greenhouse, which is an unheated passive solar greenhouse. So it's only heated by the heat of the sun. And we use that as a way to extend the growing season further into the fall and earlier in the spring. So it's actually a place that students can tromp out there in the middle of winter and open up the door and there's fresh greens and there's um, things that they can plant, things that they can water, bugs that they can find. And, um, it's a whole, it's our winter garden. Today for the harvest dinner, I was uh, working with all of the harvest crews up in the greenhouse in the garden and we harvested 
all the salad mix for the dinner, we probably harvested almost 30 pounds of salad mix and probably 40 pounds of greens um, that are going to go into uh, dinner tonight and uh, had a lot of fun doing that. During the third annual Harvest Dinner, the entire Tappan Middle School community comes together to serve and celebrate. Today you're about to enjoy is not just homemade, it's not just fresh, it's not just local, it's not just organic. It's not even just homegrown. It was nearly all grown just outside of these doors by hundreds of students and community members just working together throughout the last growing season. Garden Walk by Tappan Middle School student Shane Ross. The corn looks like soldiers standing straight and tall as the squash is trying to escape from the garden prison. The dill tastes like dill pickles as they beam in the air, but the big old sunflower hangs with its head so low and big tomatoes look like they're about to explode. The garden is green all summer and spring. When it is time, all the flowers will have to go away, from the great big sunflower down to the little bubble bees. Fall takes all of them from the beginning of the fall to the end of winter. Then they all come out of the ground again in the spring. The garden is big. The garden is great. The garden is cool. You can hear the trickling of the leaves and the smell of sweet flowers and the feeling of peace. <laughs>